America, my name is Ami Yosef from Pong. I come to you live every Monday and Thursday. Monday, I try to do a relationship show. Thursday, I do a more general politics show. Today, I'm going to talk about relationships in, in, in a very, I think, profound way. I'm reading this book, Persons and Relations by John McMurray. It was uh, it's given as a series of lectures a few decades back, and it's actually really good. And he first starts off by saying, we have this notion of people and persons and children as being just kind of brute animals and then they kind of mature into rationality. And the notion that children or infants even are mere animals comes from us from Aristotle, but it gets it, it kind of metastasizes. It's, it's in everything. <laughs> but it's just kind of the conventional notion that children are just brute animals and then they kind of develop into rationality and it's kind of the foundation of psychology and all of these other things. But he says that's fundamentally wrong wrong way to think about persons. That's like saying that animals, brute animals, a squirrel or whatever, is just a big old glob of chemicals. It's both true and not really telling you what the squirrel is. Persons are brute animals, but that's not really telling you anything about, they aren't, they are animals, but that's not what they are at their highest level, at the level in which they're persons, right? At the, the level in which they're persons, they are even born in relation. Right? So brute animals are active in a way that children and persons aren't. They are actively what they are in a way that, that, that even infants, children, and are not. Like, I have three kids. They're, when they're born, they're completely useless. They don't think very well. They don't talk. They can barely communicate satisfaction in a way that they don't even quite understand. Like some people, they don't know the difference between when they're angry, uh, hungry, or tired. Um, it's all kind of the same as like unsatisfied. They can kind of communicate satisfaction, but that's about it. You have to do the interpreting. They cannot survive in nature in any way. Even chicks, like a little baby chick, can like have the activity to pluck its way to kind of hit its way out of its egg and break its own shell. Babies can't do that. <laughs> Babies, they can only symbolically communicate and need to be interpreted by someone else. So everything in a child's life, and I think a child, not just a baby, is conformed by reason. It's not natural, right? Like the Children, persons do not live in nature. Even what we call our national parks, just that, like national parks. If you actually had real nature, real nature eats you. You don't want any part of real nature. Real nature is what gives you like all sorts of diseases and is just trying to consume you. Like what we have are parks and gardens. Well, our national parks are really just parks. And that's not nature, that's parks. And then our parks are really just gardens. And that's fine because they're made for people. And people need a world that has been uh, like terraformed by thought. And kids, especially, everything in a kid's life, everything in a baby's life is given to them by the intelligence of an other, which is perfectly appropriate. That interprets them. So what persons are, what makes them a person, and what makes babies people, is that they're in relationship with another person. So this idea of isolated people uh, doesn't make sense for infants, doesn't make sense for children, doesn't make sense for adults. Everything, every person to be a person is in relationship with an other person. We have belly buttons. <laughs> that's not cosmetic, right? So that's actually, um, and there's a lot of kind of external, out of the womb gestation that happens. <laughs> there's a lot of mental gestation that happens, right? So this idea that um, kids are just non-rational brute animals kind of confuses what kids are. They're just very, 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 very basically rational insofar as they can communicate. That's what they can communicate frustration. And they have to be able to communicate. They act to communicate frustration. Other people have to interpret what that frustration means. Don't, I don't, I, like there's some people you can't even ask um, if they're hungry, tired, or angry, or whatever. Um, you know, there's some people you can't even ask what they want for dinner without them like, ah, you have to interpret for them. Those are not the most mature people, by the way. But um, to, you have to understand that persons are what they are because they're in relationship with, you know, babies, a caregiver. That's what makes them a person. You can't be a child without being in relationship with a caregiver. Or you're not really a person. And like, I hate to break it to you, 
like there's a lot of stakes in being cared for the right way as a young person and there's a lot of stakes in caring for your kids the right way as a person who's raising other people a lot of people try to pretend that children raise themselves out of some inert like desire to whatever those are usually bad parents or lazy parents and they don't know that they're lazy parents so um everything in a human life is run through thought but when you're a child you don't think very well so it's run through somebody else's thought everything in your life it should be uh, laundered through the mind of someone else um, the mind of someone who thinks well because, uh, you know, a lot of people think that children, especially liberals, liberals are especially bad at this. Uh, they think children raise themselves or <laughs> um, are raised by nature or just like they kind of ha are what they are without being realized in a, in a particular kind of family relationship. So uh, when you're born, you are immediately in a relationship with a caregiver. If you're not immediately in a relationship with a caregiver, you die. And right, and caregiving isn't a general thing, it's actually particular. So you're in a relationship with a particular kind of caregiving that's upheld by like certain industries of a particular kind of caregiving. So when you're born, you learn how to be through membership of care with both your parents and then greater society. That's not natural. <laughs> the, and, the, and those uh, memberships of care and institutions of care are particular. They're not going to look like if I'm born an Orthodox Jew. That's not going to look like being born an Orthodox a Mormon. It's not going to look like being born a Catholic. It's not going to look like being, you know, um, born in, you know, just a regular black house. Or they're all going to look different. And they're going to, and, but they're all going and they're going to be upheld by particular kinds of infrastructures that have been carved out to meet this particular kind of caregiving and to uphold this particular kind of caregiving which is appropriate to these particular kinds of communities. Right? So, you know, by the way, if you're working with someone and you have to think about raising kids, all of this probably should be worked out before you have kids. Um, just saying. I'm just saying. So, <laughs> it's funny. Both my dad and me, um, my dad didn't kind of work out because my parents divorced and then me, it did kind of worked out, uh, but it was a little bit of adjustment because both my dad and myself like were like very serious about how we're going to raise these kids in a very particular way. And uh, you know, my wife, I don't think she said she thought I was serious, but I don't think she understood what it meant until she met, she understood that like I was actually one hundred percent serious about what I said. And she like sees it works now. Our kids are wonderful. So uh, she's like, oh yeah, I didn't actually think you were kind of serious about that, but. Because, you know, nobody else in my life is. Um, but uh, it turns out it's, it, it's awesome. And then my dad was very serious about how he raised me and my, and my sister. And uh, my mom was surprised that he was so serious about it. And they split up. And, you know, that wasn't probably the best thing um, for the family. So... You should work this out because there are going to be particular kinds of caregiving that's going to look a particular way. And I, you know, I, I think... Uh, I, I think there's a lot of low-grade child abuse that goes on through liberalism um, that just <laughs> varieties of neglect. And I'm sure a lot of liberals will look at my variety of child abuse, uh, child uh, rearing and call it um, abusive. And yet, my kids are doing rather well. So you just have to know that what it is to be a child isn't to be a brute animal that grows into rationality. What it is to be a child is to always be surrounded by intelligence, is to always be governed by intelligence it's just that the intelligence isn't necessarily yours yet it isn't yours yet you actually gain content from participating in the relationship with you know, your parents which is why parents are very important why relationships are very important you don't and so people who try to reduce person's needs to like food shelter and all of these other things they don't need that they need a caregiver and that a caregiver is going to be an intelligent way to unify all of those other needs. So you can't just kind of split up all of those needs and um, give them to a kid and, and be surprised when that kid is, isn't happy or particularly thriving in an, in an emotionally healthy way because all of those needs are, are supposed to be contained in something other than that, which is kind of a loving relationship with a caregiver. That, uh, 
So people are animals and not merely animals. And insofar as they are animals, that's supposed to be subordinated to them as persons, right? So they need food, they need shelter, they need all these other things. But they don't, if you just give them the things without the personal relationship, that's not a recipe for success um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a meaningful way. Um, and they also need moral education and all of these other things. So what m people need more than food water, food, water, and all that stuff is like a competent parent who is resourced in a way that can deliver the food, water, and all the animal stuff, but also the ethical stuff and introduce them into a world of intelligence that makes kind of rational sense and grow their reason. That, so kind of reducing um, personal relationship to their kind of uh, animalian antecedents is confuses what it is to be a person in a, in a profound way. What it is to be a human, because what it is to be a human is to be a person, not just like some sort of animal. And, and like this is empirically untested, and, but yet we still are, like hold on to this idea that we are merely animals and not qualitatively different. That's like saying a tiger and a squirrel are the same because they're both just merely bags of chemicals. And that's both true, but not actually understand what a tiger is and what a squirrel is and why they aren't just merely bags of chemicals. And you can say, like, well, they need chemicals in order to survive. Yeah, but that doesn't get at what they are. That's the same thing with persons. They need relationships. What it is to be a, a person, a child, or an infant is to have a caregiver. It's not to, like, be hungry or to be, um, you know, tired or to be anything. And to be able to communicate with that caregiver for that caregiver's intelligence to interpret what you need. Right? And like that goes, there's a lot to be said with that. There's a lot to be said about that. And especially the basic needs crowd who doesn't understand caregiving and stable relationships and certain sorts of relationships as part of what it is to be a person, but instead understands all of these goods. And then surprised that we kind of raise people who aren't very particularly good at one, sustaining relationships or satisfyingly being persons in a satisfying way, right? So what it is, for example, what it is to be an animal is to, and, and to be hungry, is to try to go and hunt food. What it is to be a person to be hungry is to look at your watch or look at the time and think, oh, what time is dinner? <laughs> right? Because the, your, your meal should be organized by a rational scheme. Um, and that's different. That's a qualitatively different disposition um, than hunting, right? Like, and if you don't understand that, you don't know what it is to be a person. You just have to, uh, by the way, the book is Persons in Relation. The chapter is uh, chapter two. Um, he conflates a lot of this with motherhood, but then he says this is actually not determined by sex. He's just using motherhood because we're talking about infants and caregiving and the helplessness of infants and the thought and interpretation that needs to go into like that quality of caregiving for young children is nothing like an animal because there is no instinct involved in the child. Instinct does not secure the child life. They'll kill themselves. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, when I think my kids were probably most prone to kill themselves right when they could walk but not do anything very well. They're just a danger to themselves. So everything in their world has to be conformed to their vulnerability because they can't really conform anything to, like, they can't keep themselves alive in any way. They're actually a liability to themselves at that age. And so we just need to understand that what it is to be a person is at any level, especially an infant, but all, is to be in a world that's been conformed through thought. It's just that when you're young, it's not necessarily your thought. It's the thought of your caregiver. So what it means to be a person is to be attached to a caregiver. And we're really kind of casual about that, both with respect to children and just like the conditions of personhood and the relationships of care that are required, not just for, not just for um, survival, although it could start there, 
babies can't do anything. But also for, um, in order to sustain relationships for self-determination. Hope this has been helpful. Uh, let me look at chat real quick. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank. I hope this has been helpful. We are persons, not animals. That means we don't need food, shelter, and all of that thing to be won by instinct. We need caregivers. <laughs> we need whole people um, to be parent to like. We need whole pe We need whole people devoted to our well-being in order to be what we are. All right. So. Thank you um, for your time, and I will see you on Thursday talking about something completely different. Peace.